Do you even know how to spell yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not. You want me to say it? No, I'm oh. looking at it right here. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Good morning, St. Mark's, and welcome to worship this morning on now the second Sunday in the season of Easter. We continue our resurrection joy as we celebrate the resurrection here at St. Mark's. And whether you're joining us in the space or you're joining us online, we're just so thankful to have you in worship this morning. If you joined us in the space, hopefully you were handed a bulletin on your way in. You'll need that to follow along with our worship service. And if you're joining us online, you can download our bulletin from our website at stmarksconchi.org. But no matter where you are on your faith journey or where you are in the world, we're just so thankful to have you in worship this morning. We'll begin our worship service by giving thanks for the gift of baptism, so I invite the assembly to rise as we face the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is the water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood and into a new day. Miriam led the dancing of your people as they passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your son, beloved son, was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Full of peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ coming among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You all may be seated. First reading, Acts chapter 4, 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were in, of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. start again. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds to what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each and any had need. The word of the Lord. Psalm number 133. How good and how pleasant is it when the kindred live long in unity. 
It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the hair, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessings of life forevermore. Second reading, uh, 1 John chapter 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our, uh, with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with, with our hands. Concerning the word of life, this life was revealed and we have seen it, testif seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, and so that you also may have communion with us. And truly, our communion is with the Father and with Jesus Christ, the Son. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at at all. If we say that we have communion with God while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as God is the light, we have communion with one another and the blood of Jesus, God's Son. Cleanse us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar and God's word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the anointing sacrifice for our sins and not for ours, but only, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to John in the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the crowds, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said again to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples came and told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Come, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? For blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which were not written in this book, but these, these things were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Y'all may be seated. Anybody want to come up for a children's sermon? Good morning, friends. Evie, I love these sparklies. They're so great for Easter. I love it. Love it. Love it. How is everyone? Good. How was your spring break? Good. How was the week back at school? Good. Yeah? No. no. Good. Why not? Good. Naomi likes school, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, ups and downs for the week. <laughs> well, we're still continuing our celebration of Easter. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah? You did? Yeah. Evan, do you know how many weeks we celebrate Easter? Three. Three? I'm close. A little bit longer than that. Four? Four? Getting warmer. Five? Five? No. Nope. Mm -mm -mm. Six? Six? No. Mm -mm. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, we celebrate it for seven weeks. It's a, a whole week of celebrating Easter for a whole season, right? It's very long. It goes all the way until Pentecost. Do you know that? Yeah, I know. So we'll be talking about all kinds of how stories about how Jesus shows up and, and continues to be part of the disciples' life all through the season of Easter. Yep, Wyatt. Oh, you do Bible in your school? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, do you go to a special school? Nah, uh, we, I go to another school, and it's, and, it's, and it's somewhere, and I don't know the name of it. Don't know the name of it, okay. But, but, but I, but, so, and, the, and there, and we also do crafts. Too. Yeah, and do crafts. Do you play games? And do reading? Do you read books? Yeah. yeah, these are all fun things that we do at school. Well, Wyatt, that's a really good transition into what I want to talk about today. You ready? So, how do you know something? You learn it at school. Oh, you learn it at school. Okay, so the only thing Evan is ever allowed to know is stuff that he learns at school. No. No. Oh. You can learn stuff on your own Oh, you can learn stuff on your own or from your parents? Okay. Can you give me an example of something you might learn from your parents? Like stuff. Like stuff about they put this in the manual for how to be a parent. Teach them stuff. Like back in the day. Like back in the day. Oh, so we're learning about history stuff or things that may have happened, right? I know when we went through February and we celebrated uh, Black History Month, we were learning a lot about different people that helped uh, during the civil rights, and maybe we learned about Martin Luther King or some of the other civil rights. Naomi, how did you, did you learn? Yeah, learned about that. Did you know about those people before? No, no, that's one of the things. So we tell stories, and that's a way that we learn. How else do we learn? Hi. Oh, Evan. From God. from God. Okay, we'll get, let's circle back to that one. I want to do, I want to do one others, and then we'll come back to how we learn things from God. Joe, how do we learn stuff? From what? Vocations or vacations? Vacations. How do we learn stuff from vacations? Yeah, we experience new things. So, like, I know in your family, sometimes you guys go do a big trip, right? And sometimes we're in countries where, like, they don't speak English, right? Like, when you guys went to France and learned about different cultures and different foods and stuff, right? And you got to experience the mountains, yeah. And where, you guys went to the islands. Where was the islands that are on fire with the hot, uh, where did you, do you remember? No, okay, all right. Well, these are some of the ways. We learn through experiences, right? How about when we're doing science? What's one of the ways that you, learn about you can learn about animals, right? And we can study, we can go, where do we go to learn about animals around here? Farms. farms, we can go to the farms and see how they go. Where else do we learn about animals? Do we go to the zoo, that's right. And we read the things and the signs and we learn about how to care for animals, I yeah? You went to the zoo one time? That's great. Yeah, all right, so science. When we get in science, and I'm thinking particularly about like chemistry or physics, we design things called what? Have you guys learned this about the scientific method yet? I, um, I did not learn, but I Not yet. Did. Yeah, that's okay. She is very smart. I love that. I love that we're encouraging one another. So one of the things that my teachers taught me is I don't know that yet, right? Because if we're learners, we, we want to put all the things in our heads, right? 
So in science, when you get a little bit older, um, they design things called experiments. Have you ever done an experiment before? Yeah? Is this ringing a bell now? Yeah? And experimenting is one of the ways. And do you know what the beautiful thing about experimenting is? Do you know what the beautiful thing about experimenting is? Most of the time we get it wrong, right? Do you get rewarded for getting things wrong? No? No? Well, yes. Some, yes. Because you learn how to do it again, right? And so when we're doing experiments, we tweak our hypothesis, right? And we say, well, maybe it's like this, or maybe it's like that. We do the experiment again, and we check the results, right? And that's one of the ways that we learn. We tweak things until we get it right, right? Do you ever have to tweak things you're learning until you get it right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, can I tell you a story about how someone was tweaking something in our Bible story today? So it, one of the disciples' names was Thomas. Do you know Tom? Do you know any Thomases? That's still a pretty popular name, right? You know a Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thomas was one of the disciples, and all of the other disciples had an experience of risen Jesus that Thomas missed out on. Do you like to miss out on things? No, it's no fun, is it? Makes us feel. So do you think other maybe Thomas was a little grumpy about that? Stuff. What? Other than boring stuff. Oh, you can miss out on the boring stuff. Okay, Riley. <laughs> That, me too. Same seas, right? Yeah. I want to miss out on the boring stuff. Yeah. Well, this was an exciting thing, and Thomas was a little upset that he missed out on it because it doesn't feel good to be left out on stuff, right? And so he says, thank you. Um, Thomas says, I'm not going to believe you until I experience it for myself, until I have an experiment where I can see Jesus myself. And do you know what Jesus does? He shows up next week, and he shows him, and he says, Thomas, come here. Come here. You can put your hands in my hands and, and feel that I'm here. So Jesus gives him an experiment, and Thomas has to tweak how he understands risen Jesus, right? Have you ever reached out to touch Jesus? Yes. Yes? When? You forget. Well, do you know that we say that everyone has the spirit of risen Jesus inside their heart, right? And so when we comfort one another and when we say, look, we're here for you and you're going through a bad time, are you experiencing Jesus? Yeah. These are, these are ways that we experience the risen Jesus through the body of Christ. And for those who take communion, do you guys ever reach out and do I put something in your, in your hands? What? Bread. I put bread in your hands, right? But that bread is really who, Evan? Jesus. It's Jesus. That's right, Wyatt. Yeah, and we celebrate that Jesus' presence is really present in that. So if you ever doubt that Jesus is with us, we can always come to the communion table and remember that Jesus is with us in communion and in the body of Christ that gathers together in community. Isn't that pretty cool? So that you, these are all ways that we as church say that these are ways that you can believe in Jesus so that you don't doubt but believe, right? Yes, Wyatt. It is Jesus' blood. That's very good. You're, it sounds like you're ready to start learning about communion, don't you? Woo you're growing up and learning so much. That's right. All right, well, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for believing in us and showing up when we doubt. Help us share your risen presence with the world. Amen. All right, back to your seats. Thank you, Wyatt. There we go. Um, so, as a special treat for us, um, here in the season of Easter, we are doing a uh, unique sermon series that I'm calling Living the Resurrection. And so um, we did this last year, but we invite members of our community to come and stand up front and talk a little bit about how they understand risen Jesus showing up in their life. And so today, we're extremely happy to welcome Kathy Bell, um, the second Kathy Bell. Fun fact, Elvanto has no idea what to do with two people with the same name. So that was fun to sort that out for a little bit. But yes, this is Kathy Bell, um, and she's been a member of our community for, here, let me make sure that's on. Okay. Is that, yeah, let's do that. Um, for, I don't know how long you've been. I, um, we were trying, we were talking about on the car on the way up. I think it's close to 10 years now. Has it been that long? Yeah, close to okay. it. Yeah, we, we were members of St. Peter's um, for about 10 years. 
I was baptized Catholic, and we converted to Lutheran, uh, Lutheranism, I guess, in, um, when I was 11. And we were members of churches down in Roxborough, which at the time had three Lutheran churches. And slowly they got closed and kind of we got pushed up. And when St. Peter's pastor was retiring, my mom and I uh, oh, decided, right. okay, yeah, when Bruce retired. Yeah, right. Yeah. We decided okay. we wanted to make a change, and we walked in here, and it felt like home, and we stayed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you're in good company. There's quite a few of the what I call the Roxboro diaspora mm -hmm. of those that um, <laughs> have made their way down uh, Ridge, <laughs> on, on into St. Mark. So you're in good company there. Well, part of this is um, also connected into understanding how we understand the life of faith process here at St. Mark's. And so for those who that might be new language for, the Life of Faith Initiative is an, an initiative that our congregation has been exploring um, over the last few years that helps us understand our, our role as disciples beyond this place. Um, for a lot of people, church is coming here on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're trying to do is reorient our understanding that church is who we are out there. And the pandemic really helped us understand that because suddenly we were the church deployed and not the church gathered, right? We were the church scattered. Um, and so what we're doing in this sermon series is kind of exploring all of those scattering things that we do during the week and, and are sent back into the world. So, mm -hmm. Kathy, one of the things that I often say is um, we understand the life of faith process as identifying those different roles or the different hats that we wear in our life mm -hmm. and, and, and really concentrating on how God comes into that. So mm -hmm. if I were to ask you how you define the hats mm -hmm. that you wear, what would you say? Uh, my first and most important hat is I'm a mother. Um, I'm a daughter, a sister, a friend. Um, I'm a co-worker, a teacher, and I'm a mentor at work. I uh, serve the role as our union rep for our building. So when there's problems, they come to me. Um, I'm also the mother of animals too <laughs> that that falls a little that further down yeah, it yeah. does it does <laughs> yeah um well and i think this is interesting because again as the holy spirit aligns people to be here to do these in certain order first thanks for being brave enough to be first no problem <laughs> um but i found it interesting that we have a teacher telling their story on the day that we read about doubting thomas mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. learning about how even thomas learns about stuff mm -hmm. so um what are some of the ways that you have been surprised by how students have learned over the years? You know, the biggest thing I've learned, I'm in my 29th year as a teacher in Philadelphia, is, <laughs> is that um, students learn best when they are in an environment where they feel safe and secure and loved. Yes. And um, even the hardest people uh, the hardest children that I've come across, if they realize that I'm on their side, uh, that's it. I got them. Then yeah. that, that's the first, that's the biggest barrier. And then from there, they can learn the, the, the little things, I guess, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, psychology says Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like you need to take care of those foundational things. But isn't that what the disciples were doing in that room? Remember, they were really fearful of the crowds mm -hmm. and that what happened to Jesus was going to happen to them next. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the story today, you hear th the doors were shut, they were locked, um, but they were protected and, and surrounded in that space. And Jesus comes into that space and says, peace, right? Be at peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like everything is okay. I know you just witnessed this really traumatic event, but peace is the first words of the new kingdom. And mm -hmm. so helping your students understand peace as they come in, because let's be honest, <laughs> I've read the, now that I have a kid myself, like the curriculum requirements of some of these school districts mm -hmm. is <laughs> right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that we're asking these kids to go higher and higher and deeper and deeper and learn faster and faster. But really what they need to know is that they're loved, mm -hmm. right? And so Absolutely. thanks be to God for mm -hmm. your sacred work of helping them understand that Thank um, you. in this school space. So I give thanks for that. Um, as we were preparing mm -hmm. for this, um, you shared with me that you had an experience with doubt yourself. I did. I did. Um, we, uh, when, uh, when I was about five years old, um, I lost contact with my birth father. My older sister and I had lost contact with him. 
and it was the 70s and divorce and custody and everything like that the lines were blurred and time went on and contact was lost and um, over the years my older sister would question maybe things could be different and I said things cannot be different this is the only way it is this is the way it was meant to be just let it lie and when I tell you it's been decades it's been decades and um, unfortunately I lost my brother very tragically and very suddenly and due to that it changed the course of everything um, and how we view life and after some time my older sister uh, decided she was going to reach out to our birth father and just see what came back you know and this happened in September and she did not tell me until January and when she told me my reaction was still like mm, poor Laurie she's not really seeing the so girl delusional. yeah so delusional <laughs> yeah and all in those thir th 30 years was my poor sister is so delusional I feel so bad but I'm gonna love her anyway <laughs> and um, so when she told me in January it was still like mm, I really have to see this for myself yeah and um, and again I, I took a little leap of faith and wanted to see if what she was saying was true and it was and it's opened myself up and her up and um, to a place of healing and love and a place I really didn't think was doable or attainable even possible yeah, yeah or even possible yeah, yeah. It, it's and if I have said God is good once we've she and I and the people who love us have said it a hundred times so when you ask me about doing it today for Downing Thomas I'm like oh you you want me to really spread my word today <laughs> I, I hear you and I will do it <laughs> yeah yeah well and that's the amazing thing about resurrected Jesus is it shows up in the midst of the most unexpected places right mm -hmm. and so for the disciples in that room Jesus showing up to remind them about peace and commissioning them to go out and tell their story mm -hmm. um, it, it is what living the resurrection is all about mm -hmm. and so you know your brother's tragic death mm -hmm. was horrible mm -hmm. but if there's resurrection and hope we have to remember that those two things are tied together mm -hmm that we don't hold Good Friday just as Good Friday, but it's Good Friday and Easter. Mm -hmm. And so for the reconciliation with your biological father, like I have to say that those things are connected, that uh, life comes mm -hmm. in the face of grief mm -hmm. and death. And, and that's what resurrection is all about. Um, so I give thanks that that story of resurrection mm -hmm. is happening mm -hmm. in your life. Um, you also shared with me that there was a, a, a God wink in the midst of some of this, right? Yes. Um, that, that Jesus slipped through that locked door in your life, mm. and it came in the way of a practice that I used to do around here, but um, writing the yes, prayer letters. Yes. yes. Um, so prior to this, probably about five years ago, um, I had gone through a divorce. I, I was married to someone I very much still love, but unfortunately he lost himself to an addiction. And it took me a decade to decide that I had to save myself and yeah. my kids and, and move on. And it was not an easy decision to come to. But when I came to that decision, that week, I received a letter from Pastor. And the letter was saying that my family, the Turner family, was the family that was being prayed for that previous week. And I was just like, Oh, again, I hear you. I hear you, and you helped me come to this decision. And just realizing what a conduit pastor was in getting God's word to me was astounding. And I still have the letter. Mm. How about that? Yep. Maybe I should go back to that. In the pandemic, we got out of that. But we used to do a practice where every week there were two families that we would just pray for. Um, and we'd send them a prayer letter to let them know that we were thinking of them. But that came the week that you came. Yeah to the decision mm -hmm. of that this is time for me to choose life mm -hmm. and and that's a hard decision yes sometimes yes, but um, I'm thankful that we're on the other side yeah. of that great oh, ordeal me, you and, me too. Um, and that we are we are seeing the signs of life even in the face of that mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. yeah well thank you for sharing yes, that with us here today <laughs> um, 
we continue this over the next couple of weeks as we learn to live as resurrection people, but I give so much thanks for you and your willingness to share your story. Can, can we say a prayer for Kathy together as a community? Um, so let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beloved child of God who continues to tell your resurrection good news. Bless Kathy and the work that she does um, in the schools and in our community and with her family, and continue to show her the true presence of your peace and your love in the face of things in her life. We just give you so much thanks for her testimony and her willingness to proclaim your good news. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of those that need to hear of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you draw near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees and crops and wildflowers and all growing things. Guide farmers and gardeners and all those who tend to soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police and firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and for the dignity of every person so that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering grief. We pray especially for the Hulse family at the loss of Russ's mother, and for those experiencing illness, we pray especially for Maddie Carr and Dolores, Ava, Lou Pfeiffer, Kathy, Linda Moser, Theophilus. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors and deacons, musicians and other staff, administrators and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another.
So I'll invite the assembly uh, to be seated, and we'll continue our practice of doing little testimonies ourselves. Um, and we'll practice, continue our practice of sharing God sightings. So, Riley, does that mean you have a God sighting for me? All right. Uh, Riley's God sighting is the opening of spring and all the trees blooming and all of the beauty around us. I love it. I love it. I know the what what um, the pear trees have popped. We haven't gotten the pink ones out front yet, but that's always a, a beautiful spectacle. At least until they decide to let go of all their flowers, and then it's like snow out front. And yeah. So Pam. Um, my God sighting is the might of God with the earth shaking and rumbling on Friday and tomorrow this eclipse with everything just lining up perfectly to block out the sun. It's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. In one of the gospel stories, it says darkness came at three o'clock in the afternoon. And I've always wondered, like, was it just an eclipse? Like, you know, I don't know. They happen rarely. I don't, you could probably line that up in um, something. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, wasn't that why <laughs> Joe was working from church on, what was that? Was that Friday? Friday, yeah. It must have been, because I was back from Chicago. Because um, <laughs> trucks come up and down the alley all the time, and I'm like, oh, but this didn't stop. <laughs> so, yeah, it was kind of interesting, yeah. Thanks be to God for no damage, at least none that we know of yet, so, uh, for that. Other God sightings. We'll be on the lookout for where God continues to show up. This is what the season of Easter is all about, that resurrected Jesus... The story doesn't end on Good Friday. It continues on into Easter, and so we give thanks for that. A few announcements before we transition into communion. I'll draw your attention to those that are in the bulletin, but um, we've got a couple of events to kind of mark um, here. First is uh, the Living the Resurrection sermon series, so please um, join us here in the season of Easter, because thank you to Kathy, who went first, but there are others who are coming in this season as we celebrate what God is doing in our lives. Um, so we invite you to join us for that. Um, the other thing is there's a concert coming up with uh, David Shear and, uh, 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 sorry, David Shear and Joe Davis um, happening at Trinity Lansdale. I think that's next Sunday already, um, but that is coming up. We have our annual Synod Assembly that's coming up at the beginning of May, so for those who are planning to be at the Assembly, know that the information will be coming out quickly about that. Um, this month, since we transitioned into a new month, hello. Um, uh, excited for that in the month of April. Our special collection for this month goes to Fill Abundance, so we're helping our local uh, regional food pantry um, this month. Um, and I'm trying to think what else is in there. I'll draw your attention to what's printed in the bulletin. Um, but yeah, we'll take a moment now to collect our offering. Again, thank you to all those who continue to support the mission and ministry of this congregation by giving of your tithes and your offerings. If you use electronic giving like I do, you can use the green, or um, I think most of them are green, the I give electronically to participate today. But on it, on some of them, there is a QR code that'll go to our electronic giving app Tidely, or you can scan the QR codes in the back um, that'll take you to that. But no matter how you give here, whether you use your bank's bill pay and send a check, use the offering plate or use electronic giving. We're just so thankful to have all of these that continue to support and make our proclamation of resurrection good news possible for people that they might experience hope. Like um, Susie was sharing her husband's experience last week of just being, it was so joyful, right? This is what it's about. So thank you for the ways that you continue to support. We'll take a moment now to collect our offering.
the foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself away to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all of their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again, remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but only as we are able. We ask you to mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receive the forgiveness of sins, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Today we'll receive communion around the altar rail, so you come forward by the direction of the usher. Uh, you receive bread from me, and then if you like wine, take one of the empty cups, or if you would like grape juice, those are pre-poured in the center of the tray. Um, we also have gluten-free wafers, just let me know that you need that. Um, but no matter where you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here at the Lord's table. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. So come and eat at God's table.
I the assembly to rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and risen Savior sanctify you and give you grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. As we prepare to leave this place and enter the mission field, let us pray together. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.